Pen Texans, welcome back to the Mission Possible podcast. This is episode two, segment one. I'm your host, Colby Yeary, joined by co-host Kenny Stewart. And we have a very special guest for you today for segment one. But first, Kenny, what did you think of the first episode? I thought the first episode was a lot of fun, and I'm excited uh, to provide an opportunity for our employees to continue to learn more and raise our site aggregate IQ. All right, me too, me too. Part of the intent of this episode is to bring on a couple of guests for segment one. We have a special guest here in segment two. We'll do the same. And the intent is for you to get to know them and understand uh, some of what they do for a living. So th without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Jason Armstrong, Pantex Field Office Manager. How you doing, Jason? I'm doing great, Colby. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, this is Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, that's a perfect segue. <laughs> One of the things Kenny and I like to do in this session is uh, help us get to know you a little better. We did it on the first episode. And what we'd like to do, Jason, if you're willing to, that is, is if you could give us two truths about yourself and one false statement. Okay. Kenny and I are going to try to guess who gets it right, uh, and just to see how well we know you. So, hey, are you sounds, ready to start? Does yes. that sound like a plan? That sounds like fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's give it a try. All right. So, I have two Huskies that remind me every evening at 7.30, it's time for a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, number two is I love skydiving. The opportunity to jump out of an airplane in tandem and seeing the whole earth, it's just an awesome experience. Okay. And then, I ran for the Kennewick School Board in Richmond, Washington, and I lost by 4% of the votes. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. Kenny, I'm going to let you start. <laughs> well, I'm going to, he was pretty quick on the Huskies, so I'm going to guess it's not the Huskies. I'm going to say you lost by more than 4% of the vote. Okay. That's, that'll be my guess. So that's, that's your, your guess. Fault. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I'm going to go with the Huskies and ice cream, although they may want it. You're probably not feeding them ice cream, so I'm going to say that's a false statement. So which one is it, Jason? So I love sharing ice cream with the Huskies. It's, a, it's like a bonding time. It's a great time. And I did run for the school board, oh. and I did lose by 4%. So it's skydiving. It's skydiving. All I'm right. afraid of heights. I yeah. hate heights. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Awesome. All right. Good share. Yeah. yeah. I would not want to do skydiving. No. Either, no. So. <laughs> great. All right. Well, um, Pantex, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, Jason is the field office manager of Pantex uh, for the NNSA. And so mm -hmm. for starters, Jason, can you tell us about that role, what it's like for you, and what is the Pantex field office for those that don't know? Oh, great question. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm the field office manager for NNSA here at Pantex. Uh, we have a staff of about 80 people here on site. And really our main role is to come alongside our MNO partner and help execute our mission. Um, we do that by a lot of partnering sessions. We get together and plan work together, and we make sure we can really execute it safely. So I would say that's really our main job. Um, we, we have another important element of oversight, as you know, mm -hmm. um, but really o oversight is really helping each other be successful. It's a two-way road, and we really value sharing input with each other. So our role is really to help execute the mission here at Pantex. All right, great. Yep. Thanks for that, Jason. Yep. Jason, we're so glad you're with us today. Thanks. Hey, tell me, how does the PFO fit into the broader NNSA? Yeah, good, good question. So, um, there are eight federal field offices in NSA, uh, and um, I work closely with headquarters to be sure that the mission priorities are well established for what we need need to do here at Pantex. And so I work with program offices, defense programs, good example, functional organizations like environmental safety, health and quality. Mm -hmm. Be sure that um, their priorities are aligned with what our priorities are. And so we can develop a, a mutual agreement on how we can best execute our really important missions that we have here at Pantex. So, yeah. yeah. Very good, thanks yeah. for that, Jason. Yeah. And, and from your view, you know, a lot of people are, are still understanding the concept of field office and what that means to have a resident group of people that are federal employees on a site working. Mm -hmm. Can you express to us the importance of having federal a federal workforce and an oversight workforce here on site locally? Yeah, um, really, really, I get asked that question a lot. I yeah. think it's a really, yeah. really good question. So our, our field office is pretty small. It's, it's 80 employees, as I said re recently. And really what we want to do is help create 
Pantex, then we can be agile to our, to our highly responsive needs here at the site. And so um, I have expertise in contracts management, business, nuclear, security, nuclear safety and security. Mm -hmm. And really what we do is we come alongside um, our MNO partner and we help execute the mission and uh, make sure it's done compliantly and safely, but we're never forgetting our overall importance of delivering for our national security mission. So. Excellent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. I think the audience will really appreciate that, Jason. <laughs> Um, and thanks for being here. Thanks for being uh, willing to do this fun. and uh, yeah. experiment <laughs> with us on these podcasts. Um, is there anything you'd, else you'd like to share with the group in terms of the site, the work that we're doing, anything at all? So I've been here, Kobe, Kenny, about 18 months now, mm -hmm. and it's by far the best place I've ever worked at. Uh -huh. I think the, the panhandle itself is amazing. The workforce we have here is amazing. Um, seeing what we do every day, we have accomplished what we thought was impossible. We made it possible. Yeah. I just love the, the work ethic, the culture, and the friendly smile that I see every day. All right. Yeah, so thank Couldn't you. agree more. How about yeah. you, Kenny? Same thing. No, I appreciate you being here, yeah. Jason. Appreciate those words. They mean a lot to us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you might remember, one of the most important things we have is the relationship with our community. So let's take a look at some of the important mm -hmm. things we do from a community relations perspective. All right, welcome back, Pantexans. This is episode two, segment two of the Mission Possible podcast. And as, as you can see, we have another guest here with us today, Mr. Kelly Byersmith, the new and up and coming President and General Manager for PXD post transition here at Pantex. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. Good, good. Feels good to be here. Good, good, thank you for that. Uh, Kelly, one of the things Kenny and I like to do as part of this podcast is have a little fun, but also get to know the guests on, on the screen here. And so if you're comfortable with doing this, we're going to ask you for two truths and one false statement about yourself. And Kenny and I will guess, if uh, see if we can guess the false statement there. All right. So uh, are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's All go right. with number one. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, I grew up in Claude, Texas, and of course, you know, I was 4-H, FFA, and, and uh, my first business was KJ Swine, and uh, I raised hogs. I had a, a Chester White, his name was Merle, and, uh, you know, I showed him, and uh, we went to the, uh, the Fat Stock Show, and, and I got reserve grand champion for, for Merle. Wow. Okay. And, uh, you know, I made enough money uh, to buy my first car, which was a 65, 64 and a half uh, Mustang. Nice. Okay. And, uh, you know, so I was debt first free edition. and had my, my first vehicle. Uh, so that's, that's one fond memory. Okay. Um, a not fond memory. Okay, not all my memories are good, <laughs> right? Uh, I can remember leaving Claude, Texas and begging my parents uh, to stop by the post office box and get my grades. This was my third semester at Tech, chemical engineering student, and I was so excited, I wanted to see what my grades were. Mm -hmm. So I went, I picked them up, I'm in the back of a Subaru with two other brothers and we're jostling around, headed to Christmas dinner with the grandparents and I tear them open and I had four Fs, one D and one pass. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. You know, I'm living proof anyone <laughs> can actually get through college if you're, you know, if you just stick with it. Um, another fond memory, uh, you know, the a buddy of mine, Greg and I, we used to go to all the rodeos. Uh, you know, we were at the Claude Rodeo. Then we'd go to Childers Rodeo, and then we'd go to the Clarington Rodeo. And at the Clarington Rodeo, we had Reba McIntyre. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. she nice. was playing at the, you know, the the VFW center there mm -hmm. at the rodeo grounds. And, and I saw her and I thought, hey, there's Reba. And, you know, I may have been a little young and ambitious. And so I went up and danced with her. And, you know, I, 
she was really sweet. She was a really good dancer, uh, but you know she wasn't supposed to be touched. And so a couple of big guys they hauled me and kicked me out of the rodeo. Okay. And my buddies they never came to even check on me. Oh my! Goodness. But when they did, I was sitting in the back of the truck with the cooler, of course, <laughs> happy as a lark. <laughs> you know, it's it's a great life. Nice. That okay. is nice. Now, is, is one of those a false statement? Or are they all true? Or are those all true? <laughs> Am I supposed to come up with a false one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> I would say, I, I'm going to guess, uh, you probably did not have bad grades. I would guess that you had really good grades. That would be what I think is uh, your yeah, false one. Well, and I, and I'm, I'm going to guess, uh, you know, the Mustang story just sounded too, too correct. So I, I'm going to guess that Reba McIntyre was not at the rodeo. That's my guess. What's the verdict say, Kelly? Reba was at the rodeo, oh. but it was my buddy that got kicked out oh. for dancing <laughs> with Reba. <laughs> exactly. right. And we found him on the tailgate of the truck, <laughs> and we did have to drive him home that night. But nice. He had a night to remember for sure. Nice. That nice. is awesome. Yeah. Not everyone can say they have danced with uh, Reba, Reba McIntyre. McIntyre. That's, That's great. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, well, Kelly, just to continue that theme, do you want to yeah. tell the audience here a little bit about yourself, some of the experiences you had, and, and a bit about your background? Yeah. I, many people know this. I grew up outside of Claude, Texas on a ranch. Um, I decided I didn't want to get into agriculture because there was no money in it at the time. And, and uh, so I figured I needed to make a living. Went to tech. Uh, I was a chemical engineering student. Uh, and ran out of money my junior year and was offered a job here at Pantex mm. um, to work at the gas analysis laboratory. And, and so I took that job and finished up my undergraduate degree at West Texas and then went on to uh, get a PhD at Tech. And 12 years later, I moved to the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and um, did the Tritium Target Project, the Chernobyl Shelter Project, uh, then I was competed at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory uh, in 2000 and uh, was over nuclear science and technology and about half that 14 year period and then over neutron sciences uh, with the high flux isotope reactor and spallation neutron source. Then I went to the Idaho National Laboratory uh, where I was the deputy for science and technology. Uh, that was about five years and then for the last six years I've been at Los Alamos as the deputy lab director and and frankly uh, it's been a great career it's 40 plus years but uh, the opportunity to come back to Pantex uh, at this time in mm -hmm. its history uh, was just too tempting and uh, so when uh, I was invited to help put together a team and and come back I thought you know that's that's important I want to do that and, and I've got to tell you, it feels really good. Uh, we've closed on our house in Amarillo. Uh, in fact, after our podcast tonight, I'm, I'm gonna go meet the painters and see the progress they've made. And All right. I've talked to the flooring guys and the pool guys coming tomorrow. So it feels really good to be getting settled in Amarillo. Awesome, great story, great background and, and connection here to the site. And uh, <laughs> if I recall correctly, you had family that worked at the site as well, Kelly. Yeah, uh, second generation. Um, my father ran maintenance when he retired. He was here for 30 something years. Uh, many of the employees know Frank and uh, my mother, Linda, she actually came to work here after I'd left uh, and did uh, stores, general stores. Uh, I met my wife uh, at Pantex. She gave me my new hire orientation <laughs> and uh, other, other training that was important at the time. Um, and so, yeah, I've got very deep roots at Pantex, and 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 frankly, it's it's like coming home. Uh, I've met many people that knew them, that knew me mm -hmm. way back when, and and it's just really inviting when you walk into the cafeteria and you know you you share these memories with people of yeah. uh, years past. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a a great great experience coming great. home. Great, Kenny. Yeah, Kelly, so we've had the opportunity for people to talk to us about some of their experiences with you and with other members of the team. So as, as we move through transition, tell me, what is PXD 
the new M&O contractor, what are they excited about bringing to the table at Pantex? Well, number one, uh, uh, local talent and using local talent. Um, you know, the uh, six uh, original people on the team uh, all uh, lived and worked at Pantex in years yeah. past. And it's, it's like pickup basketball when you're creating these bids. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out, you gotta win it to get the honor to run it. Um, but you also get to hand pick people. And, and, um, and I was given a lot of latitude by our corporate parents to pick people that, that understood the culture, uh, that had a passion for the mission and the people that love Amarillo, actually want to be here, that want yeah. to contribute to the community. Uh, and then that let us win it. And over this transition period, I've had the ability and, and the honor of saying, okay, it's putting the best possible team on the planet together. You know, where are the incumbents? You know, who, do, who can I grab that will maintain continuity, that, that have that passion for the people, a passion for the mission, a passion for the area. So hands down, I think that we're delivering the best leadership team uh, in the entire nuclear security enterprise. And, and I'm very, very proud of that. So number one, that leadership is what PXD brings. Hmm. Uh, you're not gonna see a lot of PXD. You know, it's not about the company. Our logo will not be shown everywhere. It is Pantex. Uh, that's what we're bringing back is, you know, it's, we're, we're Pantexans and we're one team and, and, uh, and the corporate parents are very, very proud. And uh, they're bringing technologies and innovations uh, through corporate reach back that I think will help, um, you know, drive some innovation into our business. And, uh, and of course, it'll be all of our duty to you know reach back and bring that in. Uh, things like uh, uh, use of Wi-Fi in secure areas. Uh, uh, you know, I I still remember hiring on here and getting the the plastic briefcase with a three-inch three-ring binder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and why aren't we giving out iPads today? You know, <laughs> that yeah. have everything you need. So, uh, you know, there's the people aspect, but there's also the weapons aspect and. Uh, digital Im uh, twins and uh, uh, you know BWXT they produce naval fuels and the reliability of those naval fuels uh, allows our ships to stay at sea for their lifetimes mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's pretty revolutionary and and they work in a very similar environment that we do here but they've been allowed to innovate and so we're going to take some of those lessons learned and bring them in uh, Texas A&M University System. Uh, they're partners with us at Los Alamos, uh, and they've introduced some uh, very unique innovations into our production processes. So, you know, as Pan Texans, we will be able to reach back to corporate parents and get that get that help, um, and then we'll leave breadcrumbs for everyone else to follow <laughs> in the <laughs> nuclear security enterprise. I, I want us to lead, not yeah. follow. Very good. Yeah, that's outstanding. Um, and Colby, I know that our team is excited to hear about some of these cha challenges and some of the opportunities that are coming. Um, any thoughts from you? Oh, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, it's, it's just something that I think the team is looking forward to. Getting to know you, mm -hmm. getting to understand your vision, Kelly, I think is going to be uh, tremendously important for the workforce going forward. And yeah. so I think they're all looking forward to that. Um, Kelly, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, before this segment concludes? Uh, just how, how happy we are to be here, uh, the entire team. Um, you know, it's an honor to, to work with the Patriots that, that yeah. uh, drive this mission. And, and uh, you know, you guys have had an extraordinary year. You ought to be very, very proud of that. And I want to celebrate that. Um, and then just keep going. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great future, and I'm excited about it. Thank All you. Right. Great. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thanks for spending the thank time you. with us today. Yeah. And there you have yeah. it, folks. Kenny, thank why don't you, you uh, close us out for the Mission Possible Episode 2 podcast? Sure. Mm -hmm. So we're excited that you are with us today. If you have any thoughts or suggestions or questions we can answer on one of the future podcasts, just send them to this email address and we will get back with you as soon as possible. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.